evaporate and go away. What's up, fam? And it's then me. it's just I'm going bad. to be left with us beating it's the drum. It's 2 over here on the and East Coast. And they don't have an answer for that. But I, I They just, don't have a I solution for the truth that the black I, The more I heard about bringing. it, the more I read about it. We have invalidated I figured, okay, their I, I need to do, I need to go ahead on and, and give oh, my yeah, two sure, cents you can have your on this whole Chad Willow thing. Sock calling themselves praising Kamala uh, Harris, but it's, it's not moving the needle. It's not convincing anyone of anything. It's an absolute mess. You're not persuading anyone. It's a mess. Um, white supremacy but did I hope not everybody's stop doing black well. empowerment at I hope all. everybody's being safe. I hope everybody's being smart. The only thing the white supremacy managed to do um, was and to I hope everybody's on cold, getting on cold, just staying on cold. a little cold. bit more time. But, um, but let's no deal mistake, with white um, supremacy's time Chad is Willow. running out. And let's That's deal with white supremacy about. We are about doing what white supremacy does. White supremacy. Okay? Because I think and you can all remember what happened when it was Ray Rice to stop and, uh, you know, how he ended up on the exemption list and, the and, and, and how, you know, everybody just went in on him and all of that. We can all remember well, like what that was like. Uh, there were no excuses made for him. Uh, there was no talk about he need to go get help and, and he was having episodes and all of that. None of that foolishness. <laughs> Thank you. That scares me. But they that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna deal with Thursday, a little bit here. And I'm not gonna stay long because I'm sleeping. So I'm and not then, gonna stay long, but I just had to give my two cents. Day, so I so it good Friday. Yeah, they got it let's get into this. Sunday, and what I wanna read well, is I wanna read the article in the New York Times. Right. And as I read this article, I want y'all to notice not only what's being said, but what's not being said. Yeah. As I read this article in the New York Times about uh, Chad Willer. And for anybody that doesn't know, Chad Willer is the, the, the NFL player that just uh, just beat up. Hold on. Now, now uh, I love watching your, uh, what, your message. That um, just beat up his, his girlfriend, his black girlfriend. And I mean, I, I mean, he put the smack down on her. He wasn't playing. Um... And um, so, yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's get into this. Okay, um, this was done January 28th, 2021. Uh, New York Times by some dude by the name of Ken Belson, right? That's, that's, the, that's the reporter's name, Ken Belson. Um, and it reads as follows. Chad Willer charged with felony assault in domestic attack case. The NFL lineman was arrested Saturday after a violent assault on a woman in his home. Right? Now, I want you to notice how in this article, this young black woman is referred to in this article. I want you to, to, to like I said, pay very, very close attention to not only what's being said, but what is not being said. Chad Willer, an NFL offensive lineman who played five games with the Seattle Seahawks this season, is facing three criminal charges after his arrest last week on suspicion. Suspicion of felony domestic violence. You understand? Not on f felony domestic violence. Which it, 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 it's already a fact. I mean, you, you know, you, I'm sure many of you have seen the pictures of her face, you know, and, and, and they'll give more description and more detail as I read into this. But again, anytime you're dealing with somebody white, uh, mainstream media is always going to make sure that they throw out there that alleged or it appears to be or it seems to be or suspicion of, right? Willow was released by the Seahawks on Wednesday, soon after prosecutors formally charged him with first-degree domestic violence assault, a felony, domestic violence, unlawful imprisonment, a felony, and resisting arrest, a misdemeanor. Now, he, now, 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 now they didn't charge him with felony resisting arrest, although they had to tase him. That, that was a misdemeanor. See, they, 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 they realized they was going too far, right? And you have to understand that mainstream media was doing all that they could to keep this quiet. The only reason why uh, 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 we know about it now is because uh, a lot of black uh, uh, folks in the, in, in, in the new black media and folks on other blacks uh, uh, in, in, in social media, on um, Twitter and, 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 and 
uh, Instagram and other social media started talking about it and putting it out there. That's the, because uh, a mainstream media had every intention of sweeping this up under the rug, of covering this up. They never had any intention of talking about this. And you'll be able to tell that they didn't have any intention of talking about it by the way this article is worded. Okay? Willow was released by the Seahawks on Wednesday, soon after prosecutors formally charged him with first-degree domestic violence assault, a felony, domestic violence unlawful imprisonment, a felony, and resisting arrest, a misdemeanor. In their charging papers, prosecutors in King County, Washington, said Willa viciously attacked the victim and choked her. Willa, 27, was arrested early Saturday morning and released from King County Jail on Tuesday after posting a $400,000 bond. Now, any black person with all of them felonies and they violent, it probably would have been a million, two million dollars bond if there was a bond at all. If there was a bond at all. Willow would be arraigned on November on February the 9th in Kent, Washington, where he lives. Prosecutors asked that Willow wear a GPS tracking device on his ankle. According to the prosecutor's charging papers, Willow uh, Willa attacked his girlfriend in her bedroom, choking her at times with both hands until she lost consciousness. After she awoke, he choked her again until she became unconscious. She told the police that when she tried to roll away from Willa, he grabbed her left arm and, rip and ripped her body back toward him. When she awoke the second time, the woman told the police, Willa returned to the bedroom and said, Oh, you're still alive. She then said she went into the bathroom, locked the door, and sent text messages to her family, friends, and Willa's father asking that they call 911. The woman also called 911 and told an operator she was being killed. When the police arrived, Willa refused to be detained. Unable to put him in handcuffs, you know, they have the hardest time with, with these white folks. They have the hardest time getting these white folks to comply and all of this. Okay, now this man done just uh, uh, violently uh, uh, attacked this woman and beat this woman up. You understand what I'm saying? And now he's not complying. He's not obeying. He's not listening. You having a hard time uh, 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 putting him in handcuffs. He's supposed to be in the midst of some so-called manic episode and all that. Where's the fear that the police is supposed to be having? Where's the fear? That would cause them to fear for their lives. So they had to shoot him. Because see had he been a black man. He'd have been shot. But anyway. When the, when the police arrived. Willa refused to be detained. Unable to put him in handcuffs. Officers used the taser. <laughs> According to the charging papers. Willa said I don't beat women. And yelled to the woman that he loved her. After the woman was taken to the hospitals, doctors determined she had a fractured arm and a dislocated elbow. Her face was swollen in a way that doctors believe was the result of choking. The woman also had lesions on her neck, some in the shape of fingerprints. Okay? Now I want y'all now I, I want y'all to notice how short this article is gonna be. And again, it's still just the woman. We get no real description of her. We get no name for her. No nothing. Just the woman. And at one point, they said his girlfriend. According to prosecutors, Willa is six foot foot seven inches and three hundred and ten pounds, and the woman is five foot nine and one hundred and forty five pounds. The woman told the police she believed Willa had bipolar disorder and had not been taking his medication. That's what she told the police. The NFL said it was reviewing the case. After the league completes its inv investigation, Willa could be suspended or fined if he was found to have violated the league's personal conduct policy. If he's found to have violated it. 
If Willie is signed by another team before the investigation is completed, the league could put him on the commissioner's exempt list. See, that's what uh, uh, Ray Rice is on. Which would prohibit him from taking the field until the league's investigation is complete. The Seahawks are saddened. Not outraged. You understand what I'm saying? Not outraged, not upset, but saddened. So this is a sad day for them. Because they got to get rid of this cracker. So it's a sad day for them. They're not angry. You understand what I'm saying? They're not upset. They are saddened by the details emerging against Chad Willer and strongly condemn this act of domestic violence. The team said in a statement Wednesday, our thoughts and support are with the victim. On Wednesday, Willer apologized via social media for what he called a manic episode and said he was leaving football. So here we go with all of this. It was a mental issue. You understand what I'm saying? It's something wrong with me. I have bipolar disorder. You understand what I'm saying? So I need y'all to feel sorry for me because now I'm the victim. I'm the real victim. See, I'm the victim of this mental illness that I have. I'm the victim of this bipolar disorder that I have. So now I need y'all to feel sorry for me. I need y'all to pour out all y'all sympathy on me. So see, that's the reason why they, 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 they do this, uh, 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 taking the social media to apologize for stuff. It's so that they can get sympathy. And so that they can play the victim. You know, I'm walking away from my, I'm walking away from my career. I'm walking away from football. I'm walking away from what I love and all of that. So I need y'all to feel sorry for me. I don't need to be held accountable for my actions. Because I was not in control of myself. It is time for me to walk away from football and get the help I need to never again pose a threat to another, he wrote on Twitter. I cannot express my sorrow or remorse enough. I am truly ashamed. So you just realized after you beat the shit out of this woman and after you fractured her arm, dislocated her elbow, you understand what I'm saying? Choked her out two times. You just realizing that you need help. You just realizing that you pose a threat to other people. Okay. Willow was set to be a free agent in March, but by waiving him now, the Seahawks have cut ties with him. Willow started 19 games with the Giants in the 2017 and 18 seasons. That's it. That's the New York Times, and that's it. That's it. They never mentioned this woman's name. They never mentioned that she was black. They didn't give all the details about her injuries. Because I'll read another one in a few minutes. I'll, need, I'll read uh, one that has just a little bit more detail in it. And this is the New York Times. This is how the New York Times reports on, you know, this NFL player uh, 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 almost killing his girlfriend. Choked her out twice. Choked her into unconsciousness twice. And then she says, he calmly, she didn't say it, he, it's not reported in the New York Times, but in another article, she says he calmly walks back into the room after she woke up the second time and looked and said, oh, you're still alive. She said while he was calmly sipping on a smoothie. But this is supposed to be somebody in the throes of a manic episode. This reporter uh, 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 somehow or another leaves out the fact that this whole thing started because dude all of a sudden just jumped up and decided that he was going to tell old girl to bow down before him and when she wouldn't do it, that's what started this whole thing. He conveniently leaves that out in the New York Times. And you got to, 
you got to remember now, New York Times, the Washington Post, all of these are the papers of records. These are uh, 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 the big mainstream media uh, uh, news reporting agencies and, and I mean and newspapers and all of that. They they set the pace for everybody else. So that's all you get on this from the New York Times. But let's go a little bit deeper. This is a this is a, 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 a article from the Los Angeles Times. Court documents alleged. Well, this uh, this was January the twenty seventh, twenty twenty. And this is by Ryan Cartje, something like that. K A R T J E. He's a staff writer. Court documents allege. They go that word again. Allege that Willa told his girlfriend to stand up and bow to him. When she refused, Willa, a six foot seven, three hundred pound offensive tackle, allegedly attempted to choke her with one hand while smothering her with the other hand, causing her to lose consciousness. Now, I understand why they use allegedly. And that's because, you know, he hasn't been to court yet and all of this. So none of this has necessarily been proven in the court of law. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, but if you're going to use allegedly in this situation with this man, why don't you use allegedly anytime you're talking about a black man that has been accused of committing a crime? Why is all why is that always stated as a matter of fact? Okay. When she regained consciousness, Willa expressed surprise that she was still alive, police said. She locked herself in the bathroom, called 911. Officers responded and found Willa, who had picked the lock of the bathroom. He was booked, he was booked early Saturday morning and released Tuesday after posting $400,000 bail. His arraignment again is scheduled for February the 9th. Now, there's another one that I want to read that gives just a little bit more detail. Now, this one is in the in, in, um, ESPN. According to an incident report and charging documents obtained by ESPN, the woman called 911 from inside a locked bathroom and said she was being killed, quote unquote. She told Kent police she had fled into the bathroom while Willa threw, after Willa threw her onto a bed and choked her long enough for her to lose consciousness. At one point, she said he removed one hand, stuck it down her throat, and pressed it against her nose and mouth to try to stop her from breathing, while continuing to choke her with the other hand. The woman briefly regained consciousness before Willa pinned her down and choked her back into unconsciousness, according to the charging documents. The woman recalled attempting to roll away from Willa, only for Willa to violently grab her left arm and rip her body back toward him. The charging documents state that when the woman regained consciousness for the second time, Willa calmly returned to the bedroom and expressed surprise, saying to her, Oh, you're still alive. She ran to the bathroom, locked it, and sent text messages to friends and family, as well as his father. She said she heard Willa tell someone on the phone she believed it was his father that he was just chilling. When the woman tried to flee out of a second door to the bathroom, Willa entered and began apologizing profusely, she said. Police could hear a woman screaming from inside the apartment, the report states. They forced entry into the unit and then into the locked bathroom where Willa was standing behind the woman. 
The report states that she was crying in pain with her face covered in blood. So for her face to be all covered in blood, it was more than just some choking going on there. It was more than, and if you see the pictures, you see the blood all around her nose and her mouth and it looked like she got maybe some bruises or some scratches or something up on her forehead and all of this. So see, this this beating entire, it, it consisted of more than just some choking, all right? With her face covered in blood and her left arm swollen and limp against her body. She also had noticeable fingerprints on both sides of her neck, according to the report. The woman was asked by one officer if, the, if she thought she was going to die, and she responded, I thought I already had. Now listen to the injuries. The woman was taken to a hospital because of pain in her left arm. Scans revealed a fractured humerus and dislocated elbow in the arm, according to the charging documents, which noted that the whites of her eyes having turned almost completely red, was consistent with signs of strangulation. So th the question now becomes, if he strang strangled her to the point of unconsciousness and actually walked in the room and said with surprise, oh, you're still alive, why is this man not being charged with attempted murder? That is attempted murder. Why is he not being charged with attempted murder? Because if he made that statement, oh, so you're still alive, then that means in his mind, he had killed her. Or at least was trying to. So the question becomes, why does this stop at just domestic violence and doesn't go on to attempted murder? Because I can guarantee you, if it was a black man, it would be attempted murder. Now just listen. The documents state, state that another scan of the woman's chest showed indications that she had expirated fluid and that she vomited large amounts of blood the next day. She also reported a sore throat, difficulty swallowing and eating, headache, and neck pain, which suggests possible internal injuries from the structures within the neck. The woman told police that Willa, whom she had been dating for about six months, has bi bipolar or disorder and that he had not been taking his medication recently. She said Willa had a manic episode but that was not provoked by any sort of argument, but rather began when he suddenly snapped into a dark place and told her to stand up and bow to him. He grabbed her by the neck and threw her onto the bed when she refused, the woman said. Um, now, 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 now here go all of this get help stuff. See, see, that's what that, that's the narrative that a uh, mainstream media and, 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 and the white powers that be want to push is that this guy, this white guy that has attacked and violently, uh, uh, uh beaten this woman, breaking arms and, 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 and messing up her neck. You understand what I'm saying? Got the whites of her eyes completely red as, as, as evidence of strangulation. He walking in talking about, oh, so you still alive, which, 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 which to me shows that he was at least thinking about killing her if he didn't give, if, if he didn't kill her. Uh, but, but, but the narrative is, oh, but he need help. See, that's just like the white folks with the opioids and, 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 and the meth and, and, and the heroin and all of that. No, see, they're not uh, violent criminals that need to be locked up and just need to be, you know, mass incarcerated and the keys thrown away on them. No, 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 no. It's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a health issue. It's a mental health issue. They need help. They need rehab. They don't need to be locked up. It's a health crisis. Now, when it was black folks and crack and all of that, no, 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 no. It was a criminal issue. You understand what I'm saying? We got to have a war on drugs. But now that it's white folks, it's, it's a health crisis. 
It's a health issue. These folks need help. These folks need medical help. These folks need mental health. Uh, 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 mental health help and all of this, you know, no, 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 this is not a criminal issue, this is not a war on drugs, you know, we need to legalize certain drugs for them you understand, we need to give them safe places where they can go and do their drugs so they can have safe needles and all of that kind of stuff see, that's what it is when it's for white folks so see this, this 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 fella here. Oh no 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 no. He he's not some he's not just some violent criminal. You understand what I'm saying? He's not just some thug that's going around beating on women and all that. No no no. He has a mental problem. He needs help. He needs to be in the hospital, not in prison. He has a problem. Okay, just listen. We encourage Chad to get the help he needs, the Seattle Hawks said in their statement, which also asks anyone experiencing domestic violence or mental illness to seek help. First degree domestic violence assault is a class A felony in Washington, while domestic violence unlawful imprisonment is a class C felony. If convicted, Willow could be sentenced to 8 to 12 years in prison, according to prosecutors. Now, let's go over here to the Washington Times, you understand, back, I mean, back to the, uh, the Los Angeles Times, and let's find out a little bit more about Mr. Wheeler and, 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 and all of his mental health, health issues and all of that, and let's find out if, if, if there's a pattern here, you know, if, uh, 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 if this is his first time, you understand what I'm saying, or if this is um, repeat behavior, okay? Willis spent four years at USC's at USC starting left as USC's starting left tackle from 2015 to 2016. In December 2015, he was had he was involved in an incident. Now it's just an incident at an off-campus apartment in which he was detained by police and then transported under protective custody to a local hospital for a psychiatric evaluation during that incident police responded to calls that a disorderly willer was punching walls and windows while barricaded inside an apartment near USC's campus with a 20 year old female friend and a 7 month old baby so he was not only doing this with a woman in he barricaded in the apartment. So him, the woman, and the baby was barricaded in the apartment. You understand what I'm saying? He going around punching walls and breaking out windows and all of that with a seven month old baby in the in, in the apartment. Willa exited the residence. But then, ignoring police commands, again, not giving the police any thought, uh, 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 not, uh, 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 remember now, you understand what I'm saying? Remember now when it comes to us, but if, if you had to just listen to the police, if you had just obeyed their commands. You wouldn't have got shot. You wouldn't have got shot seven times in the back. If you had, <coughs> excuse me, y'all. If you had just complied with the police, everything would have been all right. You wouldn't have got shot. You wouldn't be dead now. If you had just complied, if you had just done what the police told you to do. But we see this young man here on two occasions where he just totally ignored the police. Didn't obey, didn't comply, no nothing. Okay, just listen. Will exited the residence, but then, ignoring police commands, returned inside. Police, fearing he would grab a weapon, subdued Will by firing multiple beanbag rounds. Now, 
Now these are the same police that they tell us need more training. They need more training in de-escalation. They need more uh, uh, training in how to handle uh, 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 these situations. But those same police don't seem to have a problem finding out other ways other than, than lethal force when it comes to white folks. So in this instance, when he didn't comply with the police and didn't listen to the police and did exactly what he wanted to do after being violent and disorderly and all of that, in this case, they fired multiple beanbags at him to subdue him. In the case a couple of days ago, two or three days ago, they used the taser to subdue him. And even in this article here, they said the police fearing he would grab a weapon. So that element of fear was supposed to be there. But that element of fear still didn't, it didn't lead them to use any kind of lethal, excessive, deadly force with this white dude. Will have missed USC's Holiday Bowl appearance. I guess this was in December 2015. USC coach Clay Helton said at the time that Willow was dealing with a personal issue. He didn't say anything else. He didn't say anything about any, 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 any uh, uh, bipolar disorder. He didn't say anything about any mental illness. He didn't say anything about that. He didn't say anything about any health issue, anything to do with, uh, with any kind of manic episode or anything. He said the dude was dealing with a personal issue. See, it's always an excuse. So, you know, uh, uh, all three of those will be listed in the description box and you can see the difference and, and, and you can see how the New York Times really did not want to report on it at all. And, and, and I mean, he gave it as little attention and as little press and as little room as he possibly could. But the L.A. Times putting it out there that dude has a record. Dude has a pattern of this type of behavior. So you're going to wait till you almost kill somebody. And then you're going to decide that you need to go see about getting some help. When just a little over five years ago, you were involved in a similar incident. This time with an actual child in the, in, in, in the home. An actual child was present. Seven month old baby. The, the, okay, he will, uh, um, Willa was punching walls and windows while barricaded inside an apartment near USC's campus with a 20 year old female friend and her seven month old son. And you notice it doesn't say anything about whether or not he had attacked this girl, whether or not, you know, he had done any harm to her or, or, or anything like that. You don't hear them mention her anymore. But since these folks want to want to come up with this bullshit about manic episode, let's go over here and, 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 and let's just get, we're not going to go deep into it. Because we're not psychiatrists, we're not psychologists, and all of that. But we are a, a critical thinking people, and we ain't dummies. We ain't a bunch of dummies. So, and, and we know how to read. So, let's go over here and let's see what they have to say about manic episodes. So, of course, I went to Google. And I typed in... Manic behavior symptoms, right? And I have two uh, uh, links here. One from the Mayo Clinic and the other one from Helpline.com. And one of them says both a manic and a hypomanic episode include three or more of these symptoms. Bullet point, abnormal, upbeat, jumpy, or wired. 
So you know, this is somebody that's that 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 that's, is is, is they you know abnormally upbeat, you know, jumpy, wired. You know what I'm saying? It's not something that just shows up all of a sudden. You know, these type things can go on for. I mean, they can have episodes for days. They can have episodes for weeks or two or whatever, and, and they fluctuate back and forth. But that's one of the symptoms: increased activity, energy, and agitation. Exaggerated sense of well-being and self-confidence. Uh, uh, in parentheses, the word euphoria. They all hyped up. You know, they high on themselves. They high on life. You know, they have this over-exaggerated sense of well-being. Right. Decreased need for sleep. Unusually talkative. Racing thoughts and distractibility. They can't stay focused on anything. They're easily distracted. Right? Feeling overly happy or high for long periods of time. Having a decreased need for sleep. Very talkative. Talk, very talkative and talking very fast, often with racing thoughts, feeling extremely restless or impulsive, becoming easily distracted. Now, in some cases, they throw. In, in, in some cases, uh, uh, irritability is one of the symptoms where where where, where people become easily uh, irritated and 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 easily agitated and all of that. Um, so these are some of the symptoms. Now, based on what we just read and based on the length of time that this attack must have took. You understand what I'm saying? Because he choked out the first time she passed out. Then she woke up. You understand what I'm saying? She tried to get away from him. He grabbed her. That's probably when he broke that arm. And dislocated that elbow. Then he choked her out again. You understand? And she passed out. Then she woke back up. When she woke back up, he walks back into the room. She remember that I just read. She said he calmly walked back in the room and surprise and, and said with surprise, Oh, you still alive. Now, does that sound like somebody who's having a manic? Episode. Does that sound like somebody who, who's 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 overly happy or, or just overly euphoric or whatever? Somebody talking real real fast. Somebody who's real real distracted. You know, uh, somebody who's moving real fast. Somebody whose thoughts are racing. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody that might be a uh, kind of irritable and agitated and and, and just want to move around and all of that. Does that sound like somebody that's having a manic episode to you? It was one article, and I think it was the Daily, uh, 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 I think it was the Daily News or something like that, the Daily UK, where uh, she said something about he calmly walked back in the room and asked her was she still alive while drinking a smoothie. So why I guess while she was laying passed out. You understand what I'm saying? And maybe he thought she was dead. I guess he decided he was going to take the time to go make him a smoothie. I guess maybe to sit down and figure out how he was going to get rid of her body. But does the, pre the, the precision of this, because you have to remember, this wasn't just a choking. The court papers are saying, the charging papers are saying that because of the, the fact that her eyes were completely red, that was an indication of strangulation. Strangulation is a little bit different from choking. And visible fingerprints on both sides of her neck. If you look at the picture uh, uh, of her beating up 
and it's on. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put it on here, but it's it's on uh, 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 the internet. If you look at the picture of her beating up, if you look up under her nose, you'll see where there's dried blood up under her nose, like maybe. What do they call those little things? The little uh, uh, blood blood vessels and all of that kind of stuff. Probably in her nose and her eyes all up around her sinuses and everything where those little uh, uh, blood vessels had started to pop. And that's the reason why it looked like there's blood pooled up around her nose. Strangulation. Not racing, you know what I'm saying? Not, 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 you know, not, not, not just all hyped up and, and and all hyper and all of this kind of stuff. But no, very calmly, bow down to me. She refused to do it. She got jacked up. He choked her. She passed out. She woke up. He choked her again. She passed out again. This ain't something manic. This was planned. This was something that he intended to do. Oh Only question is, how long had he been planning it? A manic episode out of nowhere, he'd have just, just popped her upside the head or slapped her or something like that. It would not have started with a request like, bow down to me. It says here we, we, we have uh, the definition. A manic episode is characterized by a sustained period of abnormal, elevated, or irritable mood. A sustained over a period of time. Now you have to remember, she told the police that this episode wasn't triggered by some kind of argument or whatever. It was just all of a sudden he snapped into a dark place. That's not the way manic episodes happen. They go on for a while. And you don't just snap in and snap out. Irritable mood, intense energy, racing thoughts, and other extreme and exaggerated behaviors. People can also experience psychosis, including hallucinations and delusions, which indicate a separation from reality. If this dude was jumpy, if this dude was overly uh, 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 excited, you know what I'm saying? If this dude was overly happy and 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 and, and, and you know and 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 and, uh, and unusually talkative and, and and just you can't focus and just constantly moving, you know, because it it, it it's really really uh, uh, everything is exaggerated. All the movements, the talking, the thing, everything is exaggerated. She would have noticed it. And it wouldn't have taken for him to all of a sudden snap and ask her to bow down to him for her to notice anything. Especially since she's the one that claims that he has bipolar disorder and he hadn't been taking his medication. So if that were really the case, then why weren't you on alert? Why didn't you know what could possibly happen from this person not taking their medication? So no, it wasn't some manic episode. Absolutely not. This was planned. This was something that he definitely intended to do. This is not where he just snapped and lost his mind and all that. Because that's not what a manic episode is. People don't just snap and lose their minds. And all of a sudden they just do stuff, you know, that they've never done before. And they just start doing all kinds of outrageous stuff and all of that. No. 
It's just that their movements, you understand what I'm saying? The way they speak, uh, 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 their attitude, their mood, you know, everything is just over exaggerated. And they have a whole lot of energy. You understand what I'm saying? They become real agitated, wanting to move and, and, and you know, and, and all of that. But it's not like they snap out and, 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 and lose who they are and, and, and just start doing all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? No, that's not what a manic episode is. That might be what she want to tell herself. But that's not what the, a manic episode is. So I just wanted to come and I just wanted to give y'all, you know, just a little sample of, of, of what a manic episode is since that's the lie that they're going to try to tell. And like I said, he's going to get on social media and claim it was mental health and it was a manic episode and all of this kind of stuff. And he's going to walk away from football so he can go get some help. Why didn't he walk away from football and go get some help back in 2015 when he was barricading himself in apartments with 20-year-olds and 7-month-old babies? And punching walls and breaking windows. See, that sounds like an anger disorder. That's if it's any kind of mental thing. It sounds like uh, he has a, 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 a issue with anger. He has anger issues. Doesn't sound like just being bipolar. It sounds like this dude has anger issues and, and, and he needs to look into some anger management. That that's something that they need to go ahead on and order for him when they give him this prison time for attacking this woman. And black women, please get this. Please get this and please understand this. And please stop paying attention to, to these wackos that are that, 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 that are that are out here trying to push black women into the arms of, of, of non-black men, uh, especially white men, you know, and giving this whole song and dance about they treat you so much better and they show you so much more love and sensitivity and all of that. And the black man just ain't this and the black and, and the white man will protect you more and all of this kind of stuff. Please black Black women stop falling for that bullshit and all of this bullshit about a uh, 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 toxic black masculinity and how black men are so homophobic and so toxic and all of that please stop that please stop falling for that shit that shit gonna end up getting a whole lot of black women killed and we're hearing more and more and more of these cases of these white guys Doing this kind of stuff to black women. Uh, 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 just down here in North Carolina. About what? A month? Month and a half ago? This white dude killed his, his black wife in front of their four children. On, on Twitter a few months ago, it was the black girl that was on there talking about, you know, how she was so in love with her daddy and all of this. And come to find out, you know, this dude was a crook, stole, got her pregnant, stole all her money and everything. Then it was another one that was on there whining and complaining, talking about her daddy had jumped on her and beat her up. So please, black women, understand, if you're dealing with a toxic, violent man... It ain't got nothing to do with him being black or white. Let's be honest. If he toxic, he toxic. And let's be real. Black men have more of a reason to have some issues. Look what black men have had to deal with for the last 400, almost 500 years. Look what black men have had to deal with. So black men have a reason to have some issues. And yes, black men do need some help. Black women need some help too because we have some issues too. Our femininity can be very toxic sometimes. But we need to be working on those issues together as a unit. We need to be working on those issues. Because white supremacy did a job on both of us. Not just the black man, not just the black woman. But white supremacy did a job on both of us. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. White supremacy 
almost destroyed us. And yes, it has left us with some scars. It has left us with a whole lot of scars and a whole lot of trauma. It has left us with some toxic toxicity. But white supremacy caused that toxicness in us. And we should be working on that together. Instead of black women paying attention to, to, to these numbskulls out here and got you running over here with these white men thinking that they're going to treat you better and, and that they're not toxic, they're not violent. You understand what I'm saying? That they just, you know, the, 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 these gods that just stepped out of heaven. And then you get over there and realize that the grass ain't really greener on the other side. That that, that, that grass got snakes in it too. You know, we can say the same thing for black women that we've been saying for black men. That black men need to leave these Beckers alone because Becky has a history of leading black men straight into death. Leading him straight into death. Well, black women, what, what, what's happening to y'all is y'all allowing other black women to lead y'all straight into death. Because see, this dude could have easily killed this young woman. Could have easily killed her. If what she's saying about his statement is true, sounds to me like he thought maybe that's what he had done. And it wasn't until he realized that he hadn't killed her and that she had got a chance to make a few telephone calls that he started all of this apologizing all of a sudden. But you see white supremacy circling the wagons around him and getting on code to the point where the New York Times couldn't even really put out a good article about it. Couldn't even really put out a, 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 a good, or couldn't even report on it the way they were supposed to. Because they were so afraid uh, 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 of saying the wrong thing and, and putting the wrong image of him out there or whatever the case may be. And if it were not for uh, uh, the new black media, Tariq and some others, and some other black folks on different uh, uh, social media sites and all of this kind of stuff, putting this story out there, we never would have heard anything about it because they were going to keep this as quiet as they possibly could. Why? Especially because the girlfriend was black. Her name is Aaliyah. Especially because the girlfriend was black. But we just have to wait and see, you, you, you know, uh, 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 what kind of punishment uh, this dude gets or whether white supremacy does the same thing with him that they do with most of them. And that is that slap on the wrist. Because you see they already let him out of prison. I mean, out of jail. $400,000 bond. That ain't nothing for him. $400,000 bomb and, and just put a little ankle bracelet on him and all of that and just let him roam around free. After he attempted to kill somebody. After he strangled somebody. If he'd have strangled her one more time and she'd have slipped into her consciousness, she probably would have died. She probably would have died. And you actually have black women defending this man. You actually have black women defending this dude. The same black women that call black men toxic. They say black men ain't no good. They say black men abuse black women and mistreat black women and don't protect black women and all that. The same black women that say that about black men are defending this dude. Are defending this white man. After he literally almost killed this black woman. And 
I feel sorry for her in the way that nobody should have to go through this. Nobody should have to go through this. I feel sorry for her in that way. And I'm very, very glad that she made it through. And hopefully she'll learn her lesson. And hopefully she'll accept the truth and stop trying to make excuses for dude talking about a manic episode and he bipolar and he ain't been taking his medication. Okay, well if that's the case, then why were you there? Why hadn't you done your research on bipolar disorder? You understand what I'm saying? On manic episodes. You understand? And understood what could possibly happen and made your exit based on that. Or was it because you felt, okay, because he's a white man, he, he's not going to let it get out of control to the point where he does anything to hurt me. Was that your thinking? Or is it that you didn't know enough about the man to even be there? Because remember, uh, 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 in the article, they had only been dating for about six months. One article that I read said something about they were actually living together. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but that's what one article is reporting, is that they were actually living together. You know, so is that the lie that you got to tell yourself? Bipolar disorder, manic episode, and all of this kind of stuff in order to, in, in, in order to, 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 to possibly go back into that situation or in order to possibly go and find you another white dude? And the next one might go ahead on and finish the job. Instead of just accepting the truth. And the truth is, when you got a bad apple, you got a bad apple. It don't make a difference whether that's a green apple or a red apple. When you got a bad apple, you got a bad apple. And dude is a bad apple. With a history. A violent history. And violence that include women. Because whether he put his hands on that 20 year old. Or that baby. That 7 month old baby. Back in 2015. The fact that he that they were there. They were barricaded in this house with him. And he going around punching windows and, and, and walls. Again, a history of violence with women in the presence of women. So I just wanted to give my two cents on this because, you know, everybody's talking about it. And, you know, and I just wanted to give my two cents on it. And I just wanted to, I, I just, I mainly just wanted to get into this, you know, to show how mainstream media is trying to, 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 to low key this thing to death, trying to act like it's not as a, a big a deal as what it is, you know, tr trying to uh, uh, push this narrative that he's sick, you know, and mental illness and all of this foolishness and all of that. And to show you that based on medical descriptions of manic episodes it don't it, it don't sound like dude was having a manic episode that that's not what it sounds like that's just it it, it just don't sound like that so i wanted to bring that element to it the element of actually talking about manic episodes actually talking about uh, uh, and, and, you know, and do some research. Now that it's been brought up, do some research about bipolar disorder. I mean, but I think this whole thing about bow down to me and she refused. I think that more, that has more to do with what happened afterwards than any manic episode or any bipolar disorder. Maybe that was the first time he told her to do that and she refused to do it. Maybe every other time he told her to do that, she did it. Maybe she just wasn't in the mood to bow down on this particular day and he wasn't in the mood to be refused. 
He wasn't in the mood to be denied. But I think that statement right there, bowed down to me, and she refused, had a whole lot more to do with that beating. Because that was a beating. There wasn't no fight. That was a beating. You understand what I'm saying? There was a man that sounds to me like with an intention to kill you. And came very close to doing it. If, if, if he was doing all of this choking you and trying to keep you from breathing and holding your nose and all of this at the same time. And, and, and the doctors talk about evidence uh, of your eyes going completely red it, with, it, as evidence of strangulation. Yeah, sounds to me like dude had every intention of killing you. So just as we has, have warned black men for years and years and years to watch these black, these Beckys and to be on their P's and Q's with these Beckys, Because in more instances than we can name, Becky has led to the death of a black man. Now we got to warn black women of the same thing when it comes to these kids. Or in this case, these chads. Because this thing ain't no joke. This thing ain't no joke. Now, now, now y'all might walk around and think it's cute and all of this kind of stuff and, 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 and you know, and all this slave play because, you know, it's been a whole lot of uh, uh, talk about that and it's been a whole lot of, uh, of divest Twitter and all of this kind of stuff, the divest movement and all of this since they came out with this slave play, uh, 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 Broadway play and all of this. You know, y'all might think it's cute and y'all might think it's a game and y'all might think it's a joke and y'all might just think it's play. When they got you dressed up like slaves and you you know and they got you dressed up like you know like 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 back in the 1700s and the 1800s and all of this kind of stuff y'all might think it's cute and y'all might think it's just a game but it's not a game to them. And more and more and more they're showing that it's not a game to them. Remember there was an incident between Stacy Dash and her white husband. Supposedly he attacked her and she and she fought back. Who ended up locked up? Who ended up locked up and thrown out the house? This ain't no game. They ain't playing no games. And black women right now, we have got to especially be on our P's and Q's and paying attention and keeping our head on swivel. Because the Democrats have done everything that they could to bring all of that attention and all of that heat to black women. Talking about black women are the backbone of the De Democratic Party. Black women are the ones that won the election for, for Biden. Black women are the reason why Biden is in office and all of that. So a lot of that backlash that's going to be coming from other places is going to be aimed at us. And that's no coincidence. Because you ain't got the white feminists. You ain't got the Me Too movement. You ain't got Kamala Harris. You ain't got no Democrats. You ain't got nobody saying nothing about this. You ain't got nobody raising no hell about this. Joe Biden talking about in his first 100 days, he wants to up the Violence Against Women Act. And all of this extra protection for transgender gender, uh, uh, women. Okay, but you just got a black woman that was just attacked and almost killed. Where's going to be the protection for her? Where's the anger about what happened to her? Where's all the uprage, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uproar and the outrage about what happened to her? Ain't nobody saying nothing. Kamala Harris is supposed to be the, 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 the queen of the sorority, the queen of the sister girls and all of that. She's supposed to be this prized black woman. Why she ain't saying nothing? Why, why, why the, 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 the so-called black woman uh, vice president ain't came out and made a statement against this? Ain't this violence against women? Or is 
Because this not the woman that you're talking about. Is it another woman that you're talking about? Why has Joe Biden not made a statement about this? And said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that there are special protections for black women. Specifically for black women. But y'all fail for all of that, that the Democrats are so in love with black women. And black women are so important to Democrats. Y'all fail for that foolishness. But when you got a black woman here that almost lost her life from a big six foot seven, 310 pound man trying to crush her larynx. Her larynx, what do you, what do you call that thing? <laughs> Right, hilarious. Trying to crush that. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Everybody silent. Crickets. Why? Cause she a black woman. And black women are on what black women are only needed. You understand what I'm saying? When the Democratic Party wants them to be mules. When the Democratic Party needs them to come in and, and, and carry the load. When the black when, when when the Democrat when the Democrats need that strong black woman to come in and, and lend her back, her support, so she can carry the Democratic Party. Like she used to carry all the laundry baskets, like she used to carry the little white children, like she used to carry all the food. The human mule. We need your support. We need your strong back. But now that we done got that, we don't, we, we, we don't need you now. And we ain't got nothing for you. So you just have to fend for yourself out there. One day, hopefully it won't be too late, but one day y'all going to get on cold. One day y'all going to wake up, y'all going to get on cold, and y'all going to realize just how much you have been used by white supremacy. Just how much you have been used. But that's all I had. Uh, uh, I'm going to have... Uh, all of this stuff, all this information in the description box. Go in the description box, like I said, you know, go look at other articles and, and, and get other perspectives. Um, you know, do a little research and find out about bipolar disorder and manic episodes and all of this kind of thing. But like I said, I'm convinced that he had every intention of doing exactly what he did and probably doing more. Sounds to me like there's a, there's a, there's, there's a possibility that he meant to kill this young woman. He certainly meant to do some, he certainly meant to do her some real, real harm. So black women, all I ask is, is, is that you be on your, on your P's and Q's, that you be on guard and that you be on the alert and that you know what you're doing. Whether you, no matter what man you're dealing with, you know what you're doing. But especially if you're dealing with that man, because you don't know that man. You understand what I'm saying? You don't live that man's life. You have never lived that man's experiences, and you never can. You can't really understand him. He can't really understand you. Because you don't share an experience. You don't share the same lineage. You don't share the same history. You don't share the same psychology. You don't share the same traumas and the same memories and the same DNA and the same genetic makeup. So just be careful. All right. Um, so y'all please like this video. Please share this video. Please have these conversations on me on social media and outside of social media. Have these conversations with your family, your friends, the folks you work with. Like I said, anybody that'll listen. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification so that you can be notified when we upload videos. 
and you know y'all do some research and you know let's keep our eyes on this thing but we pretty much already know how it's going to turn out uh, uh, uh it, you know and we're not going to let it we're not going to talk about it too long we're not going to let it become a distraction this, this distraction because you, you know at the end of the day it, well i don't think they meant for this to be a distraction because they didn't even mean for us to find out about this but we can allow it to discom to become a distraction if we talk about it too much. You understand what I'm saying? And I just want to talk about it. I just wanted to talk about it because, again, you know, I'm talking about white supremacy. And, again, I wanted to warn sisters to just be careful. Just be careful. I'm not, I, you know, if, if, you want you a, if, you, if you want you a white man, go get you a white man. All I got to say is if you get you a white man, please don't use that as, a, as the excuse to start bashing the brothers. And start talking down to the brothers. And start all of a sudden act like this black this white man is God and, and the brother is 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 is, is trash can dump uh, uh you see what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. If you're gonna get your white man, get him gone over there, you know, live happily ever after and leave the black man alone. Keep your mouth off of him and everything else. Same thing with black men. If you want your white woman, go get you one. And enjoy yourself. But don't use that as an excuse to, b to bash black women. Don't use that as an excuse to act like you got this sweet, uh, 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 loving, calm, uh, submissive woman. And all black women are just loud and, and angry. And uh, don't, don't do that. Go on over there. Enjoy yourself. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and stay over there with your white woman. And keep your mouth and everything else off of black women. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying it for both. You heard me say it for both. For black women and for black men. What I cannot understand and what I do not like. Is when either black men or black women get with, with, with folks outside of their own race. And then they want to start bashing. The men or the women within their race. You're supposed to be over there with who you with because of love. Because of attraction. You understand what I'm saying? Because you have something in common with this person or whatever the case may be. You ain't supposed to be over there with them because you mad at these folks over here. So if you really over there because that's where you want to be and because you have found what you're looking for over there, then why is your mouth and your mind on what's going on over here? So, you know, we need to stop doing that too. If you have found the love of your life outside of your race, then enjoy the love of your life. You understand what I'm saying? And keep your mouth off of the opposite sex within your race. Because, like I said, you being over there ain't supposed to have nothing to do with what's going on over here. So, that's it for tonight. Um, I'll talk to you guys later, and y'all be good.